The transitions on Renaissance are absolutely ridiculous. This a reminder. Not only did Beyonce create a cohesive album full of 16 tracks without interludes, each track is actually threaded together with um, some amazing transitions that absolutely deserve some attention. So in this video, I'm going to explain track by track why these transitions are so awesome and what your ears are actually hearing. So let's get into some new Beyonce, shall we? Renaissance is here. I'm excited guys. I've been waiting for a new Beyonce album for a really long time and finally we have it. Everybody that listened to Renaissance was able to hear how cohesive of a project this thing was. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself and so I wanted to talk to you guys and tell you guys a little bit about how to listen deeper into the transitions that are on Renaissance and how we can make sense of them. So the way that we're going to talk about this is on three different planes, okay? So first we're going to talk about tempo. Tempo is how fast or how slow the music is moving we're also going to talk about key now i talk about key a lot on this channel so if we're talking about you know c major or f major or anything different um in terms of the harmony the melodies the makeup of the the home of the melodies and of the harmonies and we're also talking about what i'm going to call the sonic environment this is probably the piece that most threads everything together in Renaissance. It's basically everything that has to do with the instrument choice, the sound effect choices, um, voices, different things that let our ears know um, that we're in a different environment. It's talking about the tools that are being used, um, sound effects that are being used that make up the sonic environment. So in order for us to have a successful transition, we actually need to make track one look more like track two. So the way that we do it is we say, okay, track two is where we want to end up. Let's start introducing some of the key factors, the tempo, the key, and the sonic environment from track two while we're still in track one. So what essentially what we're doing is we're taking a bunch of the pieces that are already in track two and we're putting them in track one. So essentially what can be done is we can take the tempo from track two and we can put it in track one or we can take the key from track two and put it in track one. And I think that's what makes I'm That Girl track one actually the perfect track one for an album like this because I'm That Girl in and of itself has some of these transitions. Like for example, we start with like, you know, the it's not the diamonds, it's not the pearls, I'm that girl or whatever. I'm that girl. And then the key shifts to something different. Um, Bring the beat in. Da, 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 da. Right? It's in a completely different key. And then when we're actually getting into the next song, we have the There's a few keys that are already in I'm That Girl. So we're going from place to place to place. And even when it comes to tempo, I'm That Girl is probably characterized off of the changes in tempo. It's like, uh, these little people ain't stopping me. It speeds up and it slows down. It gets us used to not having the same tempo for an entire song. And then also we have different arrays of instruments that are in the different sections of I'm That Girl. So I'm That Girl in and of itself takes us through what it's like to go from transition to transition. So when it's finally time to transition from I'm That Girl to Cozy, what we do is we actually pretend like we're going through another transition in tempo, like there already is an I'm That Girl. But what Beyonce did is she turned the tempo that was in I'm That Girl, and what she does is she changes it to the tempo of Cozy. A little bit of a speed up. And then here we go. One, two, three. This a reminder. And then we're in Cozy. So the tempo itself got us ready to be in Cozy. The tempo was already here. Now the same thing with tempo happens from Cozy to Alien Superstar. At the end of Cozy, we get a speed up in tempo. Takes out the key. And we start to speed up. Right there, that's unique. And then we change. Please. Sonic environment, and we're in Alien Superstar. And Unique comes from Alien Superstar. Unique! Unique! 
That's an example of us taking the sonic environment from Alien Superstar in this instance, as well as the temple by speeding up the tempo of Cozy to get us prepared to transition into Alien Superstar. And that's exactly what happened. I have to mention this about Alien Superstar. The Casanova is wild. I just had to mention that. Just had to mention it, but anyway. Now the whole album feels cohesive, but not every single song is connected to the other. But what it does create is like, there's these sections that are almost like movements. It's like movement one is like, uh, I'm that girl, cozy, um, alien superstar. And then we get into Cuff It, Energy, and Break My Soul, which brings us to our next transition between Cuff It and Energy. Now Cuff It and Energy, I feel like, like when I was talking to my wife about this song, she phrased it this way in saying that, Energy is like a reprise of Cuff It. Like Cuff It and Energy are so close in terms of their handoff that you barely feel that there is a transition from one song to the next. Pull it up, cuff it up. On stage rocking, I'm stuck crazy. It's as if Energy was actually a part of Cuff It. But the way that Energy actually takes off and evolves, it does actually feel like another song. It was on stop mode. So with the, the line between the two tracks of Cuff It and Energy, the tempo actually stays the same like throughout for the both of them. Um, and the key stays the same for the beginning of Energy. But really the thing that really makes there be like a, a transition is the change in sonic environment. And specifically, there is a section at the end of Cuff It with Sonically, it's like the, the synth that is there at the beginning of Energy was introduced during that final section of Cuff It. And actually, it's the chord progression as well, because it starts at, right? Right? And that's the chord progression from Energy. Right? Now we got a different artist, which is another sonic environment, but it's the same chord progression, same tempo, and key. Now we're starting to change the sonic environment with some of the African drums that are starting to come in. But eventually, energy takes on not necessarily a completely different key, um, but we start to introduce a more, again, a more Phrygian, uh, Phrygian thing. Da, da, da. Right? right, so we're starting to introduce new things that are not making the key completely different, but are shifting the way that we see the key so that it's something completely different than Cuff It. Now from energy to break my soul, the big thing that makes this transition is Big Frida. The bigness of her voice, the yak, 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 yak. <laughs> She naturally takes your ears attention and I feel like they use that to, to their advantage Especially with Rick Frida's association with the song break my soul So as we're coming out of energy we hear yeah, 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 yeah That signals a change in the sonic environment that is a part of break my soul We brought it into energy and then it's saying get ready for break my soul Right? There you go, into Break My Soul. It gives Break My Soul an opportunity to actually change the key and slightly slow down the tempo. I feel like Break My Soul is a little bit slower than energy. That change in the sound that was brought in here, what they did is they introduced it and then they gave us a period that where all we're hearing is that change and then they bring us into, into the next track, Break My Soul. And then we get Church Gold, which is actually more on its own. It's not a part of any more transitions that are happening, but in and of itself, in and of itself Church Girl has a lot of things going on. It's actually one of my favorites. And then we get Plastic Off the Sofa. Now I will be talking about Plastic Off the Sofa on its own. I'm gonna do it in another video. So for those of you that thought I forgot, I didn't forget. I'm actually doing, gonna do it in another video. But in the meantime, Plastic Off the Sofa starts, I think about a four track movement uh, between, um, what is it? Uh, plastic Off the Sofa going into Virgo's groove. First of all, that transition, but we'll talk about it. Uh, plastic off the sofa into Virgo's groove, going into move, going into heated. Those four make up in their own little section. Now, I feel like the transition between plastic off the sofa and Virgo's groove is probably my favorite transition of this entire album. <laughs> I feel like it was the most like in your face being like, oh, we gonna transition. We not only get a sharp change in tempo, right? But we also get a change in key. It changes the tempo in a 
radical speed up type of way and brings us to the tempo of Virgo's groove, but then in a very beautiful transition, right? It kind of takes us all the way up and then we're all of a sudden in this new key, right? That sets us up for the sonic environment, right? To actually be changed at the start of Virgo's groove. Speeds up, right? Gives us the chord and then chains it up. Yes. Woo! And then right here. Right? Isn't it wonderful how a well curated album like this can actually give us the entire message of a singer? Like Beyonce is all about freedom on this album. She's all about like, you know, even sitting in her voice because there's a lot of changes that happened in her voice. We talked about it in another video, but I want to actually speak to a lot of you that are actually looking to get your own music out there into the world and specifically want to get your voice out there into the world. Because I've spoken to so many different people that have been frozen in their music creation all because of their own lack of self confidence confidence and the lack of confidence to actually put out their message through song. So that's why I actually created an online resource for you to be able to actually start to discover and reclaim your voice. So I want you to go to reclaimyourvoice.ca slash masterclass and watch my free training because there I'm going to be able to give you some tips and tools for you to be able to get comfortable in your own voice to create music the same way that Beyonce is, but for you and your message. Because all these transitions are absolutely amazing, but it all starts with a singer who actually has the confidence to put out what they want to say. So I want you to go to reclaimyourvoice.ca slash masterclass, watch my masterclass, and reclaim your voice. Reclaiming my voice. Anyway, let's keep talking about these transitions. Going into the latter parts of the album, we're getting more sharp changes um, where we're not necessarily getting as much of a dovetailing. However, because a lot of the tempos are very similar, we're still getting a similarity in one of those three different things that we talked about, the tempo, the key, the sonic environment. And going into move, we actually get one of these sharp transitions. We get a very sharp change in key, a very sharp change in sonic environment. But because that tempo is the same, it feels like we're on the same journey. And I would actually argue that a lot of the bongos and the drums that we're getting at the outro of Virgo's group are actually very evocative of the sonic environment of Move, actually. So we actually are getting a little bit of SE in uh, Virgo's groove. So very sharp, but this tempo's gonna stay, stay the same. And, right? Now going into Heated, we actually got something that I found very interesting. Because again, we get a sharp turn in terms of, you know, changing the key, actually all three of them, the key, the environment, and the um, sonic environment changed very quickly. Coming straight up the jungle. We transitioned into an instrument that was actually very light. Even though you could hear a little bit of the tempo of heated in there, it actually kind of cleared the space in terms of tempo. A lot of these different uh, vocals and sounds that are from the song to actually start to introduce, introduce us to this new sonic environment. And with the end of heated, that brings us to the end of this third movement. Oh my gosh. Woo, this is a lot, guys. But we're getting through it. An honorable mention to heat it. Yada, 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 Yo. <laughs> now the final movement starts with thick, but at the end of thick, we got this little that produces again an another sharp turn at the change of the track. There are a few things that are in that last little synth that actually prepare us for all up in your mind. So going out, so going out of thick, we got this little slower or like more ethereal section that's kind of built on this little D minor-ish type of area, or let's even just call it D. Right? And then we get that 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 D that's up there. And then they kind of chop it up. Which brings us into the uh, And that note right there is actually a common note between the keys that we came out of on thick and the key of all up in your mind. And not only that, but because the temples are the same, it's again provides a very very cool transition right there. All of your mind hits a spot. It might be gunning for my favorite right now. What's my favorite? I didn't even tell you what my favorite. Virgo's groove. 
please <laughs> anyway all right um so it's not the last movement um but between thick and thick and up thick and all up in your mind you get um you get one transition but then that actually brings us to the actual final section which is america has a problem going into uh pure slash honey <laughs> between America has a problem and pure honey there is really um, a sharp change in sonic environment but in terms of tempo we got the and then we get the they're all in the same tempo but the sharp change in sonic environment brings us again to another world and then getting into um, the end of honey into summer renaissance Miss Honey, 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 Honey. And then what they do is they set up Summer Renaissance with um, that new synth. And actually Summer Renaissance is a little bit slower, but they soften the groove by taking out the kick and get the Honey, 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 and then putting Summer summer Renaissance there. Again, a sharp change in sonic environment, a sharp change in key, but only a slight difference in tempo. And that brings me to the end of talking through all of the transitions in Renaissance. My head slightly hurts, but it was worth it because this album was so good. And also, I actually want you to take a look at this video if you really liked the runs and break my soul. I actually take some time to actually break it down. And there's actually a lot of other videos of me breaking down runs here on this channel. So I want you to go check those videos out also subscribe because this is the place where we help you to reclaim your voice reclaiming your voice i'm o'neill gerald donald and i'll see you all in another video happy listening to renaissance bye everyone